we no longer have the energy we used to. We used to be in bed awake all night, our immune systems getting weaker. As much as we were building to become a sea over company, we were disregarding becoming a sea over our own body. And we were trying lots of different like plant med medicine, herbs, different nutrition, uh, different therapies. In, in that sort of journey that we both went through, it was going on for months by the way, um, there's a friend of ours that said, uh, you guys should go to this mushroom tea ceremony that's happening in London. Um, there's a Chinese doctor coming from Fujian in, in China, uh, where essentially they have been healing themselves and helping themselves to function through mushrooms for centuries. These mushrooms, they're antiviral, they're antibacterial, they're anti-inflammatory. It's, it's, it suppresses the uh, symptoms of anxiety, depression, hot flushes. This is crazy. Yeah. So many benefits yeah. just from a mushroom. Yeah. Yeah. One teaspoon of dirty chaga is the equivalent of 600 blueberries in terms of antioxidants. Andrew, Simon, <laughs> welcome to Millennial Mind. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for being here. I'm mm. so excited to have this conversation. Yeah, like It's so weird that we met, I think. And I mm. always believe things happen <laughs> for a reason because obviously I didn't know you guys. I was randomly at Soho House and Mike was shouting my name and then you both came over and you just had such a positive energy about you and you were so friendly and so warm. I was kind of taken back because I think when you generally meet people, they're not so like, hey, so great to meet you. Or just like, yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so nice to have you both on here and I'm so excited yeah. to get into your journey and your brand and talk about Dirty. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Dirty, like Christina Aguilera song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. get dirty. Yeah. So tell me about yourselves. I want to go back to the roots. What happened when you guys left school? <sighs> Who goes first? I left school. For, uh, by the way, you know I'm older than my brother. I do. Yeah. God, does, does, okay, some, <laughs> sometimes people think because of Andy's beard and his hair, he looks slightly older. Um, <laughs> yeah. I went to... I went to Queen Elizabeth Boys School, if that means anything. QE Boys? Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. I applied to go to QE Girls. I Did you? Get in. Well, just to let you know that we always had to leave half an hour earlier than QE Girls because the headmaster didn't want us to kind of yeah. socialize uh, with girls. Yeah. I feel like the schools back then were like, no talking to the boys. We yeah. had what for yeah. grammar and what for boys. Yeah. And we were never we never did anything with them. Like right. we weren't allowed to they weren't allowed to wait for us outside school. It was like a very hidden thing. No one we didn't have like any joint classes together. It was very strange. Yeah. What well, is a very kind of archaic um, yeah. uh, the school. equipment to my so I went to boys school in St Albans. It was very long. Okay. And then the one uh the girls' equivalent was called Stags, but it right. was nicknamed Slags. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so the but the reason actually the reason I actually brought that up because mm. I was never really academic. So I was always mm. average and below. Same. Yeah, but and the amazing thing was that uh I was I'm I was diagnosed. I think it's a gift now being dyslexic in some mm -hmm. capacity. But I didn't really get the, uh, the the attention and I was incredibly frustrated kind of um, chat boys looking out the window, never really focusing my attention. But the, the teachers didn't really care. They All they cared was the average and above the ones going to Oxford. And yeah. interesting, two years below me was uh, Jay Shetty. So Really? Yeah, yeah. He made it onto the Wikipedia of uh, QEB. So there That's you go. so funny. Yeah, I know him well. His wife went to my school. No That's way. how I know them both. Yeah. Oh, oh I see. really? Right. So small world. That's how I know yeah. QEB boys. I feel like there's a, there's like a group of schools like Merchant Taylors, QE Boys, John Lyon, that all in kind of like that area, what for grammar, and so you know everyone from there. So, Amazing, yes. Yeah, I'm probably we one spoke of the few people him. that knows your school. Uh, okay, we spoke with him at, uh, we did this talk at Voices. Yes, yeah. I Business saw. Business of Fashion, yeah. yeah. It was about the mushroom movement and mycelium, which we did with Merlin Sheldrake who has a book called Untangled Life. Uh, if you haven't read it, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jay Shetty, I think, did his talk. Ours was on mushrooms. His was on finding your purpose. Nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's great. I yes. love both him Doing and Doing so well. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, we're soon to do something with him, which I'm looking forward to. But right. uh, yeah, so we went down a reunion, uh, reminiscing mm. our times at QE, which was uh, <laughs> remarkable. Uh, but obviously this moment isn't really about QE. <laughs> it? But, but it was the reason I brought up, because you know there's this idea of self-deprecation certainly came from when I was at QE. So... Um, we, I left there and uh, went into college, went into the conventional way of going to university, went to mm -hmm. Leeds Uni. But the interesting thing is Andy was, um, you're six years behind me. Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but my mantra yeah. is about him never going to, to, to uni. Uh, not yet. Uh, maybe, you know, I think now as a generation, there, there's this possibility of going back into uni and studying the things that actually does resonate to the core of who you are. Exactly. Uh, um, but maybe it might actually envelope into the story that kicked off our journey. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, from my side, I kind of got a little bit uh, uh, irritated and bored at school quite early on. I think probably by the time I got to sort of GCSE, I was like ready to, you know, 
boot it. Yeah, exactly. So I had always had this very sort of rebellion mindset, you know, also dyslexic. So kind of always looking for unconventional ways, you know, like mm-hmm. never like processes or structured forms. Same. Always like to like building my own path around things. Um, I guess we're, I guess dyslexics are more uh, like survivors, problem solvers. Mm. Great at creating problems, but also very good at solving them too. <laughs> mm. I like that. Um, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I so kind of always had this very creative, entrepreneurial mindset. Always mm-hmm. been inspired by you know people going out there and creating something new. Uh, always kind of you very much as well on top of like up and coming trends, you know, mm-hmm. uh, finding stuff whilst they're weird before they become popular. Um, what was weird that I found? <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, my Any brother, example. well, my oh, brother got is. into biohacking. Okay. Very Years relevant ago. to the decor covering the brand. That's, that's amazing. Um, Sorry, I don't know where else to put it. Can I, it's just <laughs> so hot. It? Yeah, it's yeah. just so hot. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But carry on, <laughs> I think, I think so, so yeah. So yeah, no, my, my brother got into biohacking very early. Um, around the time that we had our chronic burnout, which I'm sure we'll talk about soon. Mm -hmm. Um, So he used to do some very strange things. So he had this red light um, that shined through our entire house in the evening before we went to bed. Um, I'm sure there's a logical reason you'll explain why, Um, but it made our particular house look like the red light district. (laughs) So I think there's probably people queuing outside for the wrong reasons. Um, He used to tape his mouth which yeah. yeah yeah he's got yeah. he's got logical reasons for all I've of got this. justification for wow. everything yeah yeah I like the taping the mouth I yeah. think I should do that sometimes <laughs> wait 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 do you know the reason the intentions why or you just is this I'm a gonna guess. that you want to I'm gonna guess go for it so that you listen and that you don't sometimes speak or thinking oh, uh no not to do with oh. that no, yeah, yeah my brother deserves one of those no of well no i mean i always say wow you... i really thought i cracked that like, <laughs> no no no, no there, i there always is, there say is a, there is a i'm sure there is okay. i always <laughs> say that uh you know you, you got one mouth and you got <laughs> and two, two ears, ears. so you yeah. should listen here in equal proportion Very yes nice. another one um yeah Dude. there's reasons he takes there, there is reasons yeah. what is the reason uh, so compared to the animal kingdom we are the uh, we are the worst breathers the worst breathers, we all breathe through the mouth, which is has no filter, which basically increases the probability of certain chronic symptoms and so forth. Um, but no one really breathes through the nose. The nose is the, the most powerful part of the uh, of where to kind of in- increase nitric oxide, increase blood flow, increase the calm. It actually calms the nervous system if you're using mm-hmm. your nasal more uh, and also improves your sleep and also gets rid of uh, snoring. True or not? No. Um, Stop snoring. Well, no, I mean, we're obviously very close as brothers. You know, we live together, we work together. So uh, I get to see him in his most intimate form. And there has been times where he's come into my room at night and forgot he's got tape on to tell me an idea or something. Yeah, yeah, like, I can't yeah. fucking understand what you're saying. You've got tape on your mouth. That's yeah. So yeah, yeah. funny. So how often do you put tape over your mouth? Um, voluntarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, voluntarily, yeah, mo- most evenings. But it does increase your kind of... Uh, your your sleep cycle as well. I've always been fascinated by sleep, mm. by the way. So, but the int- the reason I brought this up is Rabbit that, hole, by the way, yeah. This- sorry, I'm like, wow. Let's talk about this for like three hours. <laughs> well, this particular one, I don't think is going to fly. But uh, size always been good about discovering new things that can improve your life. Mm. That when he's explaining it, everyone thinks he's strange and weird. Mm-hmm. But then catch up with him three or four years later, and everyone's talking about it. I feel like I'm gonna put tape over my mouth now. Yeah. At night, I'm gonna yeah. try it. It really does. It's 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 amazing. It's... You do have a lot of ideas though, because even just before yeah. we started filming, I was like listening to you, and I was like, wow, you're so inspiring. Oh. Like, <laughs> I don't think he's weird. I think I'm one of the weirdos. That's like, tell yeah. me more. I'll try it. Like, <laughs> anything to improve, like my sleep or fatigue or to calm down a little bit. I'm all for that. Yeah, and also you're on you're you're on your pursuit as well, relentlessly, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. no one ever said it's gonna be a fairy tale. So there's always gonna be mm-hmm. always gonna be challenges. And... Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. Uh, talking back to me back to you sorry <laughs> so we'll yeah stop talking <laughs> uh, so restlessness in school so mm-hmm. um and so my brothers obviously you know now age gaps don't you know i think as soon as you hit get into your 20s age gaps are kind of irrelevant For sure. uh, but you know he was six years older so always inspired by him and maybe a little bit jealous that he was out free to go and explore the world mm. so i think that gave me even more of a restlessness um and that kind of is probably what formed our early union you know we've been always been very close you know we we did everything together when we were young and we still do today yeah even though you were so much younger Mm. you're quite nice as an older brother yeah Yeah. exactly you know it's really really interesting i was listening to uh a couple of brother directors who work together and they Mm -hmm. said it's a really great way of putting it that when you have two siblings um 
what kind of happens when you're you got the elder and you got the younger, mm-hmm. regardless whether it's sisters or brothers. Um, there's this point in time where the older sibling can either accept them into their life and say, you know, come socialize me, let me show you the world, or then go, you're too young for this and then reject them. Yeah. And that's what creates the division as you go older into adulthood. Or they could, and so I was always very accepting of me when I, even though I was so much younger. Yeah. So, you know, always kind of looked up to him, you know, when I was younger. Don't look at me like that. I'm not looking at anything. You but, never, you never say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the camera. Yeah, um, it's for the show. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I guess the dyna- dynamic of our rela- uh, relationship, the fact that I was very restless, you know, always driven by achievement and mm-hmm. being ever always been ambitious. So I was eager to get into the world of business, and why? Because <laughs> I didn't realize there was a time when I got called from mum. Well, they, yeah, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we were we were uh, in the early stages. But we'll, we'll tell you about what actually happened mm-hmm. to it, but. In the early stages of, of building uh, an event, and there was an intention why I built this event. Uh, Andy, how old were you so I can get this right? I was probably in sixth form. Yeah. And At which point I had an attendance of 50%. Oh my so gosh. I would, so Andy would be dropped off around the corner, not outside school. Mm. By my mum. And then Andy wouldn't, ta- wouldn't go to the school. I would then get a call where the teacher was saying to mum, your son hasn't attended any of the classes. And he's, she's like, what are you talking about? I just dropped, just him, dropped off. him off. And yeah, and, they, and then they call me. Then, what were you doing? No, no, no. You didn't have a I was, phone. Huh? They called me. No, no, no. But you called me. I called Andy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I called so he Andy. called me, be like, "Where are you? Are you at school?" And I'm like, "Nah, I'm seeing a venue in like old no, no, Billingsgate. It's old Billingsgate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm in a meeting. I got calls today. Like I was kind of running this business on the side. No way. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I literally every day would plot how do I either escape school or not turn up to school. That's amazing. And what yeah. was the business? So we had an events business um, and a sort of uh, kind of millennial focus uh, branding agency. So, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at your card. Maybe you should that. Uh, start that up again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what um, we always, you know, Sai obviously gave me access to a lot of stuff when I was younger. And, mm-hmm. uh, we've always been, you know, very good networkers and connectors. So we used to go to, you know, when I was very young, we go to lots of events and parties mm-hmm. and we kind of, see how brands would try and connect with a younger audience. And we always thought it was wrong and they mm-hmm. weren't getting it right. Um, so we managed to get ourselves in the doors of some huge brands, sort of consumer brands like Fiat, for example, when they were launching the Bravo. And we were able to convince them that we knew how you could market a car to a younger generation. Amazing. So this is kind of the, before mm. social media. I mean, uh, when I say social media, it's probably around time uh, MySpace existed. Right. Um, but the... But the idea of influencing people, uh, creating something that's culturally credible and then influencing someone to make a purchase and buy into a brand with their heart Mm -hmm. still existed back then. It was just different ways of doing it and kind of internet culture was just coming in. So um, we always believed in events. We always believed in the idea of creating experiences because experiences last forever. Mm -hmm. Um, And using music as a way to connect with a millennial mindset, right? Um, So I remember once we, you know, took over uh, the Roundhouse uh, at the time that indie music was um, very popular, top of the charts. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead of doing a typical car launch where, you know, you get people sort of showing up for sort of champagne to look at the new car, yeah. we actually put uh, Fiat cars in the middle of the Roundhouse during a live concert with indie bands. So wow. basically, whilst you're seeing these amazing rock stars like mm. the Kooks, Kooks and Baby Shambles and stuff like that, you were getting in and out of a car. That's so amazing. Yeah. So it's creating sort of uh, the right associations, creates cultural mm. credibility, and then the idea of bringing people that can then influence purchase, so getting the influencers back then. So it's kind of what we were doing, um, you That's know, kind amazing. of making it up. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you both said is like mm. you weren't very academic, and I yeah. think... Generally, when you're younger, if you're not academic, you're not seen to be clever. Right. Well, that's an insecurity I still have today. Right. You know, I was never somebody who got like the top grades in school. I struggled so mm. much. And because of that, my whole life, I feel like I have to prove myself that I'm clever. Mm. Because when you're younger, people are like, oh, you're not clever because you didn't get 10 A stars in your GCSEs. But this is a prime example mm-hmm. of how you are clever and you're not defined by your grades. Mm. Yeah. Which is yeah. something I think we're taught so much of when you're younger, right? Like you didn't get any attention in school because no. you weren't in that top far, top part of the class, mm-hmm. and you didn't get to go to Oxford or Cambridge. But 
but just because you don't go to university or just because you don't go to the top university doesn't mean you're not going to be successful. And I think mm. whilst we're seeing a lot more entrepreneurs going through that journey, there is still that taboo of if you don't go to school and you don't go to university, you're not going to be successful. You're going to struggle yeah. in life. I, I completely agree. And I, I do think there is a little bit of a shift and a change, but mm. absolutely like widely and generally speaking, that's the case. Wow. And I think that's based on there's a paradigm to how you're judged. There's exactly. a, a system that's in place. You go into school, mm -hmm. you do the same subjects as everyone else, and you are almost like on a conveyor belt. Like yeah. everyone is almost educated, like they're going to come out at the mm -hmm. end the exact same. Yeah. Uh, but actually, we're all different. You know, yeah. we're all born with this, you know, burning fire inside of us. You know, this desire, you know, sort of childlike mind to want to explore the world, to create, create. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a kind of existential crisis that comes from being a, a you know, a mortal, you know, wanted to yes. create purpose, want to create a difference. And I think we're all naturally born with that. And I, I think agree. as we go into school, this is how I've always seen it, is that we go to school with that feeling inside of us. Maybe we don't quite understand it because mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been nurtured. And then we confront ourselves with uh, that paradigm that system and then also you know adults who bring us up exactly. that have probably been mm -hmm. through the inner trappings of life and they've seen how hard it is to have success and achievement and do things differently yes so they start to say like you know when you ask what do you want to be when you're older people say like i want to be an astronaut and they're like yeah, yeah that's probably not going to happen you know um yeah. and be you know realistic. you should be, be realistic exactly Think about things that you can actually achieve that's something yeah. i've always been taught my whole life it's like yeah. you know as long as you're i think for me it was like, you'll never achieve greatness. It was never said to me, but like, that's the underlying message because when I was in school, I did really badly in my GCSEs, like really, really badly. Yeah. And ever since that moment, I think everyone in my surroundings yeah. just thought I was stupid. And so Same. I was just gonna get by. And yeah. so anything I did was like, I should be grateful that I got into Warwick to, to do a degree. I should be grateful yeah. that I got a job. And so I should never let those things go. Mm. And so I, because I was so lucky to get them, I've always thought like, to, I'm always so scared. Like even now I'm so scared to leave my job and turn my podcast full time because I'm like, what will I do without that? You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's almost this underlying fear that's inside of you because like you said, it's the system. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I th um, there's one thing, uh, um, a friend of ours, who's a great philosopher actually, a guy called Jason Silver. Mm. I don't know if you've come across him, but yeah. S-I-L-V-A. Um, we had a conversation once and he, we were speaking about this essence of wonder and awe and at what age do we lose it? Mm. You know, the fact that when you mm. see kids in the park, it sounds weird to say, but when you see kids in the park, they're building their own fairy tale, their own world in the park. Yeah. And uh, but at some point, the institutionalized idea of education, I think suppresses that wonder and all. All of a sudden there's mm. a, this institutionalized approach. I'm talking from very, very much a spectator side, because if truth be told, um, our parents always allowed us to kind of dream. You know, we weren't, really? we weren't, we didn't grow up in, in, in as, as wealth is concerned, but a wealth of love. Yeah. And that was probably a testament to our kind of uh, unconditional kind of uh, love that we share, certainly mm -hmm. in personal and also in business. Um, but when he was talking about the essence of education, um, I, I think as age is concerned, I think, uh, like saying before, if university is there to kind of educate, it should be at a later age, mm -hmm. I think. I think it's too much of a weight when you're still mm -hmm. in the essence of growing the mind, the brain hasn't mm -hmm. even uh, matured to the point to really understand. What uh, you I think, want to learn, yeah. what you really enjoy. Absolutely, and I think, you know, this is where the internet is exciting. You know, obviously there are some terrible sides to it as well. Of course. Um, and the addiction to social media is causing, causing all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the thing is, it is an accessible platform where your dreams can come true. Exactly. Um, you can educate yourself now, you can find information, you can, I mean, it's amazing when you look at kids today and they're so quick on the computer, you know, mm -hmm. like there's someone actually in our um, hmm. team that sped, out, sped up the mouse movements because it, wow. do, it doesn't move quick enough for her. <laughs> yeah, no. if you touch okay. it, it's wow. so sensitive. She's increased the sensitivity of it. And it's just quite um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so impatient. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing. This I think sort of internet, social media has created this world of DIY. And you think about like, you know, when you're, you're building a business or a brand um, or you're, you know, whether that's you as an individual and a, a celebrity or whether that's an actual consumer brand, uh, the audience is immediately accessible. No longer do you have to go through a uh, middleman or a media title to actually access that audience. Yes. Um, whereas now, you know, through 
social, you can now reach an audience immediately. You can pay for that or you can earn it yourself. I think because of that, there's an element where there's a rebellion Mm -hmm. against that. You go to school, mm. whereas, you know, and you have to go through this process. Now people are obviously, you know, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, yes. uh, and a lot of people are like, what the fuck's that? But the knowledge is being built very quickly. You know, you've got like esports, um, mm. you've got people like Gary Vaynerchuk sort of, you know, inspiring and empowering people to yeah. do their own thing. Um, so there is so much opportunity out there right now mm-hmm. because really something like Google, you can get the information super quick. Exactly. You can find and connect with people super quick. Um, and you can build things on your own and you don't need these systems and paradigms mm-hmm. to sort of control you. There's, there's yeah. also, even where we are, we can talk about um, the mushrooms. Obviously, we weren't schooled in fungi, nor did we, are we mycologists or nor did, the university didn't exist. Uh, when we were at university, they were never spoken about fungi, maybe mm. plants and animals. Um, and from what you're saying, all you have to do is snap away the keys and then mm. you're, you're on your journey to kind of relentlessly yes. educate yourself. And actually also in fairness, we have about four or five mentors that have kind of presented themselves to us on our journey. Mm-hmm. And they've been the great teachers for, our, for us on both a personal side uh, and on a business side and probably one of the greatest... Um, Treasures has been those mentors. Yeah, definitely. So tell me about Dirty. Yeah. yeah. Why did you start it? What what inspired you to first think of the brand? And why was it so close to your heart? Um, so yeah, so we've obviously, so it's probably since the age of 16, we've both been in business together. Um, as I said, like very like highly ambitious, uh, super driven, uh, just wanted to achieve and have success. Um, and um, that's all we really cared about. So we'd work all the time. Mm-hmm. We would sacrifice sleep just to get that extra hours in the night. Um, you know, we Are you telling would... my life story right now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's funny because every time we tell this story, it's very it relatable. It's so many yeah. people, which yeah. is why this platform has become what it has become. To be honest, yeah. Sorry. So, um, and I think the you're never really growing up truly told how to look after your mind and your body. Mm-hmm. Never. And you also think you're invincible and you can overcome anything. <laughs> this is literally what somebody said to me the other day. They were really? like, Shivani, you're not a machine. And yeah. I was like, well, I am and I'll be fine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're going you're gonna to burn out. And I'm like, no, I won't. Burnout yeah. is in the mindset. But like, I am burning out, yeah. you know, because I'm yeah. seeing the effects on my body. Like I'm losing yeah. weight. I'm getting spots. I'm feeling really like foggy. So mm. even if it's not something that you think is happening to you physically it does impact you right yeah, mm. absolutely no you're absolutely right um uh, and we saw a, a gradual decline um which sort of uh to me through it quite quickly got to a, a stance that um we no longer had the energy we used to right um used to be in bed awake all night um or at least be waking in and out of sleep um with a sort of negative loops um building a lot of stress and anxiety mm. um we what <laughs> no, no, was to... oh, um, ptsd there we are yeah Aww. the yeah. yeah and then what that sort of led to was um our immune systems getting weaker mm. we then were known less of those two young guys enterprising entrepreneurs always doing great things always looking really healthy to yeah. The guys that all, why are you guys always ill? Like always getting ill, like colds, flus. I knew we did a lot of, and we still do a lot of business in LA right. um, and, and the States in general. So we're often on planes. And I knew when I would get on a plane, I know by the time I get to the other side, I would have caught something. Yeah. Um, we were basically using anything to energize ourselves okay. uh, and just stay connected to work, stay engaged, mm. you know, try to be like the best version of ourselves mm-hmm. um which was like you'd reach for anything that would sell you on that idea so mm-hmm. caffeine for example oh my god we would drink so much coffee uh you know sugary drinks you know yeah. bad nutrition you know yeah. in fact we didn't even think about food it's like what's the quickest thing i can get so i can get back to work um and basically very quickly this whole thing sort of caught up on ourselves and i actually remember looking in the mirror in my mid-20s mm-hmm. looking so tired i looked so tired and i was like wow, I look awful, it's not right, and um, I'm only just getting started. There's also another part, you know, with the the age distinction, me being older than my brother, I was, I felt, um, obviously we were going through the same thing, but me being older, it's like I was a success and failure. Because I didn't have the answers for him, because as an older brother syndrome kicks in, it's like the mentality is to protect and you have the answers and so forth. That's always what the case was, but I didn't have the answers for this. And as much as I was immersing myself in these alternative 
alternative natural tools. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as we were building to become a sea over company, we were disregarding becoming the sea over our own body. Mm -hmm. right. um, and well, then you turn to your, your kind of trusted source being your GP. Always, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and they, because, you know, um, I did. This was also acts of desperation as well. Oh yeah, we were looking. For anything and everything. Yeah. Well, like Andy's saying, like time, we were talking about this before, time was mm. the great enemy. There, there was never a comrade of ours. So, and we always, that was also a sense of amplifying the anxiety, but of course sleep amplifies all these kind of conditions we were mm. going through. So the, you know, doctor, um, as much as they have the knowledge, the, the knowledge was always limited on the basis that there was a, a lack of knowledge in um, different Eastern philosophies or different mm. in integrated medicine mm. based on prevention. You're oh. going to see them when actually the, the unfortunate circumstances has played out. Mm. Um, so to be presented with- They these... basically um, prescribed us with um, an anti-anxiety tablet right. and then a sleeping tablet, which we took, did, we didn't, mm -hmm. didn't take, we took home with us right. and then we started Googling and all we saw yeah. was all these side of potential side effects and then regretful testimonials. And we ran a thousand miles. It was like, yeah. there's no, no way, way we're gonna do this. Yeah. So um, really kind of led by Simon, um, you know, and all that like weird stuff we're talking about earlier. <laughs> uh, he would literally do all this research and share it with me. Um, and we were trying lots of different like plant med medicine, herbs, mm -hmm. different nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, different therapies, all completely from na nature. Nothing was artificial, wow. nothing came from a chemist. Wow. I guess I'd say the forest was our pharmacy. Mm. Um, and um, in in that sort of journey that we both went through, it was going on for months, by the way, um, there's a friend of ours that said, uh, you guys should go to this mushroom tea ceremony that's happening in London. Wow. Um, there's a Chinese doctor uh, he only needed a well, uh, well, she said he said tea master, tea master, but it was a Chinese doctor that yeah. basically had come in from Fujian in in China, mm -hmm. uh, where essentially they have been healing themselves and helping themselves to function through mushrooms for centuries. Um, and he said you should go along. By the way, he didn't tell us any of this because we actually thought he was sending us to a place to go and get high. <laughs> yeah. Right, because that's what people generally think, right? And we'll, we'll come on to that. We'll yeah. come on to psychedelics in a minute. Mm. Okay? Yes, yeah, so um, there's this misconception. There is a misconception. So at this point, our only knowledge was either it's the thing you take out of your pizza because you don't like the taste of it. <laughs> I love mushrooms. Mm. <laughs> I don't like truffle though, guys. I'm so sorry. Don't oh, really? To, I'm right to the weirdest person because yeah. no, no one I've met hates truffle. Yeah. And I just, I love mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just hate truffle. I, I won't worry about it. I, people are like are mortified when I tell them. Like, oh, <laughs> really? What do you mean? I'm like, I, ha I don't say I hate you. Oh, okay. yeah. How's you our know? reaction? So, so that's how people's reactions are. They're very upset when I really? say they don't like truffle. Yeah. We always say we're the mushroom company for people who hate mushrooms. <laughs> it yeah. does not taste anything no. like a mushroom. It tastes no. like a chocolate, but not mm, like no. a chocolate, but I don't know, it just tastes really good. It's got the same vibe, right? Yeah. But the interesting thing yeah. is, um, is when we met this, this lady, it was in a very dim lit apartment. Okay. Uh, you're already stepping into the sacred environment already. So you're kind of uh, going to this uncharted territory, but mm -hmm. you know, we surrendered to the forever box. We just wanted to fix ourselves. So uh, we sat with her cross-legged down and um, she would sit with us silently and she'd present each one of these mm -hmm. mushrooms in a powder. Yeah, I mean, so essentially okay. what she did is, so at this point our knowledge was zilch on mushrooms. Uh, which is what we're trying to change for <laughs> everyone in the world now. Um, my, that's what my knowledge is now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess about to change. Um, so essentially what she told us that I didn't realize at this point is that fungi are its own kingdom. Mm -hmm. so like the plant right. kingdom, the human kingdom, the animal kingdom, it's its own kingdom. Uh, there's over 150,000 types of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, 5.1 5. 5. million species of under the fu fungi. Fungi. Um, wow. So mm. yeah, and all we know is that there's something about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so just the, <laughs> pizza. Yeah, That's yeah, that, yeah, or terrible. What's the other but one based called? on the grandiose scale of that yeah. five point one, if you put that into scale, so. For every uh, plant species, there's six fungi. So yeah, that's the that's that's wow. the magnitude yeah. of how big the species. So is. fungi yeah. were the first species to come from the ocean to the dry land. Okay. When they did that, they created a mycelium network, which is an underground fungi network. Um, and what that did its first sort of job on earth was it created topsoil okay. and then plants. Mm -hmm. uh, without uh, this mycelium network, there'd be no such thing as trees. They wouldn't be able to live. It's how plants and trees basically communicate and share minerals and nutrients. Okay. Uh, it's how they survive, it's how they thrive. Still to this day, 
at least 80%. 90. Of, is it? Over 90%. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I said at least 80. Okay. So over 90% of plants live in symbiosis okay. with um, fungi or mycelium. Um, it's also, we won't go into science, but mycorrhizing, right? Mycorrhizal. Uh, yeah, mycorrhizal. Um, so, um, yeah, he's supposed to be the one that's not academic. He's correcting me on everything. But, um, yeah, so, um, so we're more closely linked to the fungi kingdom than we are to the plant kingdom. Wow. In mm. fact, we share up to 54% DNA with mushrooms. So I'm a, half a mushroom? You're half a mushroom. You are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm half a magic mushroom, which yeah. is why I'm <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm always yeah, like running trippy, around like you? a lunatic yeah. all the time. There we go. I've, I've solved it. I've solved myself. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, they, they're like a lung. They actually... Um, breathe in just like us oxygen okay and they breathe out carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide. 25 percent of the biomass is made out of fungi spores which are the uh, the seeds um reproductive seeds of mushrooms okay so um essentially the mycelium network in this context imagine it as a tree mm -hmm. and the mushroom as the apple on the tree so the mushroom is the fruiting body of the mycelium network so contained within the fruiting body of the mushroom are active compounds. Just getting a little bit ahead of myself. So within mm -hmm. the that king, in the kingdom, mm -hmm. over 150,000 types of mushrooms, there are ones that we refer to as functional mushrooms. And these mushrooms are absolutely incredible and probably the best things on earth when it comes to functioning better in terms of your mind, your body, mm -hmm. your organs, your lungs, your immune system, etc., uh, and helping you to also heal yourself as well. Wow. And that is what we were introduced to on that night, and our minds were absolutely blown. Can I just say that point? Yeah. So, uh, so as much as these mushrooms heal us, they're also healing the, the um, and flourishing our planet. Mm. It's right. it's why the the trees, uh, it's why the plants blossom. It's why the trees are incredibly green. It's it's they produce medicine. Like um, um, thirty five percent of medicine derives from fungi. Mm. No. Um, so the pharmaceutical industry has been using fungi. We so just didn't know about it. And yeah. it's the one ingredient within a pill, for example, that has no side effects. Oh and, my and, gosh. And interestingly enough, so there's been five extinctions in this planet in its life cycle. Uh, every extinction has been fungi has re-inherited the earth once more. And we're now going through the sixth extinction and the we're the cause of that. We're the cause and we'll yeah. be the victim okay. uh, with everything going on. Yeah. But fungi will re-inherit the earth at once. We, <laughs> so can, we can cut that part. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> Anxiety? Yeah. I've got a mushroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to sip on my tea. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so talking about the tea. So mm. that night we drank four mushroom powders. Uh, the which, ones that you're drinking. Right. Which we're now, you're drinking one of them now. So, um, so to put it into context, these mushrooms, they're antiviral. The antibacterial, the anti-inflammatory. Um, so, essentially, when you've got something wrong with your body, it's mm. usually caused by inflammation. Right. So, effectively, these mushrooms are good for just about anything. Yeah. Uh, they're also immune modulators, so they balance out and strengthen your immune system, stopping allergies and can also an can I give an example stopping of that? flus and viruses. Yeah. So like well, hay fever, for example. Yeah. Yes. Hey, okay. Okay. So. Yeah. No way. We don't get yeah, it anymore. We don't get it for six years. Haven't had You're it. joking. Yeah. Can yeah. I give an example? You're going to sell out on every dirty yeah. product. <laughs> if you market it as a yeah. hay fever, yeah. Yeah. Prevent, preventer, like everybody hates hay fever. Yeah. yeah. And like my boyfriend, he literally suffers from it so much. And I said to him yesterday, I need to think of a genius idea on how to get rid of hay fever. Right. Yeah. Here you it. go. Yeah. You got your idea. Well, they, yeah. So <laughs> I, mean, I used to literally get itchy eyes. I, all I the really. Yeah. I, yeah. My throat would be. I saw throat. I mean, it was ill from hay fever and it would come around every year. Uh, and also when I travel, I have not experienced it since that day. So there's, so yeah. like Andrew's saying, these mushrooms, all of them are adaptogens. But the one thing that's actually incredible, I mean, Chaga is a great example, but Reishi is the one for hay fever. But just to give you an idea um, that uh, you always want to have your immune system at cruise level. Mm -hmm. Never over-regulating that. Always bring it down to cruise level. You know, when your, your immune system is compromised after the gym or waking up in the morning, mm -hmm. Um, to kind of um, boost it, some people will take something like echinacea, but any, all that's doing is overstimulating mm. it. Now with the mushroom, with chaga, for example, we'll go through all of them, but all it's doing, try, all it's doing is it's upregulating your immune system to that cruise level. So your body's in that homeostasis. So it's that level between uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. So 
Calm and digest and, and fight and flight. Just being right in the center there. And if you can get to that center point and you're mindful mm -hmm. of it, it's absolutely amazing what you can accomplish through your your day from nine to five, whatever it may be. Um, so that I would say is the epicenter, which is yeah. very important because every mushroom has that. Now with reishi, which we will talk about mm -hmm. with uh, hay fever. Right. Um, so your histamines, for some reason, become aroused by pollen. Yes. And it's very hard to find anything to suppress the arousal of that histamine. Reishi does that remarkably well. So when you start to get that microinflammation, that's from the histamines. The reishi suppresses that and it will disappear. So oh. you won't have, you can walk, you can take your boyfriend for a, roman a romantic walk through the fields in the summer, <laughs> uh, find yeah. a field that's been lawned. Yeah. So it's, it's an aggressive form of pollen and just see that you could be making out rolling around the fields and they sneeze. <laughs> and they sneeze, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> so yeah, so that's they yeah, so that's kind of the the, the 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 baseline. They're also known for their antioxidants, uh, which we'll go to in a bit. They've got more antioxidants than anything else on planet Earth. Yeah. Um, they're also incredible for the mind, so they help us think better. So yeah, we'll go into what you're drinking in a minute. They uh, they can actually regrow and regenerate brain cells. Um, joking. Yeah. yeah, they can repair nerve damage. They can so soothe stress and anxiety. They can help us sleep better. Um, My mouth is like, I'm really trying to like close not it. Drill. Oh, <laughs> <mouth tape. laughs> the tape. This is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. Crazy. there's so many benefits yeah. from just these four things. Yeah. Sure. And just from a mushroom. Yeah. Sure. Why has no one ever thought about it before? Well, there, there are, there are, there are incredible mycologists and pioneers in the world of mycology. They're really mm. globalizing the conversation to and a I, certain degree. And I've got to say that in terms of the Eastern medicine, I yeah. mean, this stuff has been around for centuries. If we were having this conversation in, Ch in China, like, well, why are you telling me stuff I already know? I, you know, my mother wow. gave this to me and my broths from when I was a kid. There's a reason why they live longer. And they have beautiful skin and they have beautiful, beautiful hair and yeah. they're very healthy. So 85% of the mushrooms that are produced stay in China, they don't leave. Why is that? Because the Western world doesn't know yet mm. about the power of the mushrooms. Yeah. After this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> um, but the, but so, the, yeah. the, the, I would say, just sorry, my, my friend. I would Apology say. not accepted. Yeah. I would say this, though. I would say this, that, that the only reason also is there is the misconception, which we keep rep yeah. repeating that word, but then it, it's, it's, ha it's carried a lot of bag. Uh, 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 bad connotations since the 60s, but that's mm -hmm. driven really by um, the psych the classic psychedelic being psilocybin, um, which has proliferated to the other mushrooms, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But we can yeah. talk about that later on. Yeah, so to go through each mushroom, um, so well, I'll start with the one you've been drinking. So that's, mm -hmm. that's lion's mane. It's the mushroom for the brain. Uh, we call it the focus mushroom. Okay. It is unbelievable if you just want to engage your mind and focus. Um, improves your memory and recall. So what's really interesting, I think a lot of people who've had long COVID or come out of COVID have actually had issues with sort of recall and memory. Yes. Um, and they live by this because it's just improved their memory. Uh, it's really good when you've got a lot of stuff going on. If, you know, mm. if you're at work or you're mm -hmm. planning something, writing up a report on a spreadsheet, doing an investor deck, you know, whatever it might be. Calling out all the things I do every day. <laughs> good <laughs> yeah. way to sell it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so it's just really good. I f so I find when I drink this, so I usually have it sort of in the mid-afternoon. Mm. Okay. Because it's just personally for me, I, I've always got a lot going on. And at that point in the day, I'm overwhelmed by all the work, you know, emails, calls, to-do lists, all that kind of stuff. And I, it's taking me too long to get work done. I suddenly drink that within like 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I feel calmer and completely focused and I just get through things. And I think that's why we get a lot of people who are on ADHD medication and now drink lion's mane and come off the medication. Not that I'm recommending that, but we get that these a lot. Stories. These are, the, these yeah. are like the feedback we get. Um, um, it's I also- one cup a day. Just from drinking one, one cup, cup a day. Two grams in every, uh, yeah. in every cup. It's, uh, it's, so, it's also good for your digestion as well. So it basically gives you a healthy digestive system as well. So, you know, it's often the gut is referred to as the second brain. Uh, so that's why we call it, you know, sort of the focus mushroom or the brain mushroom. So they basically are magic mushrooms, aren't they? They're magic in a yeah. very different They're kind magical. of way. Yeah, they yeah. are, they are. They, they, are. they just also, don't make you high. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and recently, because we did a talk about this, but uh, as uh, menopause is concerned, um, lion's mane is, is decorated in quite a lot of research mm. based on how it suppresses the uh, symptoms of anxiety, depression, and hot flushes. Yeah, uh, wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a, a quite a it was quite a fun case study because it was based on thirty women 
uh, eating um, lion's mane cookies every day with two grams in their cookies. So it's kind of a you fun. Get some recipes up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can make. I mean, if you want to make one up, we've got we've got many um, people pitching in some ideas. <laughs> I'm not um, really a baker. Um, well, I am of Betty Crocker, where you just add a, a couple of eggs and some some water and oil, and oh. there you go. <laughs> we maybe, do the same. Ma- maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do a collaboration. Betty yeah, Crocker yeah, Betty. of course. Yeah. There we go. Dirty Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Don't know how that sounds, but. <laughs> um, so, yeah. um, Chaga. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that has more antioxidants than anything else on planet Earth. So just to put that into perspective, one teaspoon of dirty chaga is the equivalent of 600 blueberries in terms of antioxidants. Yeah, madness. Mm. And um, it's ba- essentially the chaga has gone, our dirty chaga has gone viral recently because uh, particularly women have been speaking about how it's improved their skin. So we've actually seen people writing into us because it's selling out now. that It's got rid of acne, rosacea, psoriasis, psoriasis and eczema. No way. Yeah. <laughs> it's also there's a there's a high concentration in um, melanin. melanin. And interesting, I don't know if you know this. Ah. So so chaga is it's actually a, it's a parasite on a on a birch trees, and it usually takes about twenty twenty five years for a, the mushroom to kind of proliferate for in time for someone to kind of cut just forty percent of the, the 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 fungi or the mushroom mm-hmm. so that it can still proliferate around the forest, and it actually secretes its own melanin to protect it over all those years. Mm-hmm. So you're actually extracting the thing that it's protecting the mushroom from. Uh, which I find amazing. amazing. And also it has a high concentration of other minerals and nutrients, some of which I believe, well, there's studies show that we are kind of deficient in, whether it be vitamin D, uh, magnesium. So mushrooms and, like us secrete yeah. their own vitamin D yeah. when exposed to sunlight. Yeah. So I, you, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I need to just process this information. Do you, want, yeah. do you want to take a break? <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what? No way. <laughs> oh my God. So cordyceps um, essentially is known as nature's energy enhancer. So it's got no caffeine in it because you all day s- the s- sustained energy. Um, <laughs> and what it actually does is it increases the lung capacity, helping get more oxygen through the body to the muscle tissues, to the cells and the organs. So a lot of people would drink it every day. Um, our fr- I think our mutual friend, Roxina Fauci, actually men- she actually mentioned to us she sleeps one hour Ooh. less no, Le- one less. hour less oh, a day yeah, sorry. because right. of uh, cordyceps. She has it in the morning and she no, adds it to right. her coffee. So the interesting thing is that you can drink these as a tea, okay. but you can also add them to a smoothie or a coffee and it doesn't change the change taste much. or anything. Um, but so, yeah, so base gives you more energy throughout the day. Um, can I add the but reason for the energy? Also, but also, it's incredible before uh, a workout or a yeah. cardio session or a run. And genuinely, mm-hmm. if you have, I mean, I'm naughty. I do a tablespoon of it before <laughs> a run and I can I can run for miles upon miles You're and miles joking. and I feel no, no strain on my, I used to. You used to I couldn't get past time, 5K. Right? Then yeah. I put this into, so talking about the fact that we had no energy anymore. Right. Since cordyceps, we've now, we now run marathons. How do you choose which tea to have? I feel like that's all I would drink all day. How, how, what's the ideal uh, combination? So, well, yeah, I don't want to hear question. the next one because yeah. everyone <laughs> I think, I'm like, well, this one's going to be that great. You, know? quickly you could do a podcast on each one, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> because everyone who tell me, I'm like, okay, the next one's going to be like, oh, it just helps you with, I don't know, something. <laughs> like telling me like a revolutionary thing about every single one. Well, yeah, like, Reishi's like the Let me just add, crazy add, add also the energy is, is based that um, magically. Um, cordyceps has a... Um, a compound called cordycepin, which actually activates the production of more ATP, which is basically not not to drop the science too much, but it's almost like having a battery pack around your cell levels. And ATP we have anyway, but it mm-hmm. can be depleted. This right. activates more, which is why you're in, you have increased energy mm. uh, with no with no dips. It's um, also a hormone balancer. So I know someone's talking about yeah. menopause recently because sure. it's quite amazing. It's, it's now being discussed. I think most like men's health issues, we don't talk about anything. Menopause mm-hmm. is one thing women didn't talk about. Right. Um, and actually it uh, balances out her hormones. Um, so for any women going through sort of menopause, it's, it's great for, um, so I mentioned it stops hot, hot flushes as well. It's also uh, great for women on contraception. Cause yes. One of the hardest things about, and loads of people are talking about this recently, there's no male alternative mm. that's equivalent. And for women who are scared to go on contraception, one of the things that they're most nervous around is the hormone imbalance. Yes. And so this could perhaps help with that too. 100%. And to that point as well, it actually improves your sexual performance. It increases, so cordyceps increases your libido. Amazing. That's from experience as well. 
Yeah. <laughs> Won't go into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the next tea. Are you yeah. sure we can hold on this level? No? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Reishi? Uh, Reishi is the queen of mushrooms, a kami mushroom. It's it's one of the most researched mushrooms in, in the yes. world. I've heard of Reishi. Yeah. yeah. Many have, actually. It's it's interesting. I mean, it's decorated in so many uh, narratives going all the way back until the Tao Dynasty, um, mm-hmm. which I can share shortly. But to go into the benefits quickly, um, there's over 270 compounds within this mushroom. Uh, one of the compounds... Uh, calms your nervous system down almost puts you into that parasympathetic state mm. it's not a sedative i mm. just to say that none of these have any caffeine or sedatives so it just improves your quality of sleep it yeah. doesn't actually yeah. put you to sleep so for example yeah. so if you're getting if you want to get back into your circadian rhythm on the basis that you've been pushing the envelope for so many days not getting the the sleep that you need that mm. if you choose to go bed at 10 30 for example drinking this an hour before and then preparing yourself the body the, the brain chemistry will shift the idea of going to sleep uh, and the studies will show that you can it does increase your um, non-rem your deep sleep mm. um, it's amazing I wake up I would say two three times every night mm-hmm. I don't remember the last time I had a night where I slept through really no so we're it's gonna a, heal you in so many different ways like all <laughs> yeah. my problems yeah. are broken down into these four categories <laughs> yeah, exactly. which are the solution yeah. but which teas do you drink every day and can you drink all four every day yeah good question too many mushrooms yeah no. so no. all really good <laughs> questions <them> <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean you can't get addicted to the mushrooms you can't overdose on them um okay. so so in terms of my day essentially okay so our, our, our job on this planet now is to bring mushrooms to the masses. Um, and our whole thing is about how do we make this accessible to everyone mm-hmm. and easy that they can have it as part of their everyday lifestyle. Right. Um, and we're doing that in the way that we're creating a brand that is aspirational. It's like a status symbol. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing it in a way that's fun and creative. Yeah. I find a lot of brands... Mm. Or, or companies that live in the wellness space or and I think that's that the issue that we saw and the reason we started this brand um, can be sometimes intimidating um, and just isn't very cool yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah uh, or credible or however way you want to say cool um, so what we do is we look at behavior so to change behavior is I mean it takes hundreds of millions in, mm-hmm. in, in marketing money. Um, so the best way to do is to take something that someone's used to doing as all part, already part of their routine. So um, I can't remember the stats on this, but we're pretty much addicted to coffee and caffeine. Um, I mean, there's 63 million people uh, in the UK and I think over 100 million cups of coffee are consumed a day. Crazy. Um, so the problem with uh coffee is we drink too much Ca- caffeine is good because it's got antioxidants and stuff like that but we're over caffeinating ourselves and it's leading to anxiety it's leading to us being more stressed it's affecting our sleep it's giving us these mid-afternoon crashes mm-hmm. um and it's affecting our health mm. um and we want to solve that problem um we want to solve this mental health crisis and we have the tool to do that and that is mushrooms yep. um so what we've done in terms of the behavior so we looked at these existing behaviors so people like coffee and they enjoy coffee and it's part of their daily routine so we've taken coffee mm-hmm. um so we've taken an arabica coffee um okay. it's a curated blend from central america curated because we wanted it to taste amazing okay. uh, so it's a very smooth coffee what we've then done is blended that with mushrooms but we've right. blended it with three mushrooms so it's got lion's mane in there for focus. Okay. It's got chaga in there for your skin and your immune system. Well, I haven't spoken for a bit of time, so might as well do this. <laughs> and then it's okay. got cordyceps in there for energy. Okay. Um, so because you've got the mushrooms in there, you get the natural energy. Um, and therefore you don't need as much caffeine. Right. So we've reduced the amount of caffeine in your cup of coffee by 80% than a normal cup of coffee. That's amazing. You then mm. get your coffee because you like the taste, you're used to it, it's your behavior. Uh-huh. So you get the taste of coffee, with the benefits of mushrooms. We've also added a couple of other ingredients in there like ashwagandha, um, oh, yeah, Ayurvedic herb, adaptogen, uh, great for sort of removing sort of stress from your life mm-hmm. and a maca for digestion because people have issues with digestion when it comes to coffee. And what is amazing is, is that, you know, we've challenged coffee. We've literally come out as this brand challenging coffee. Mm-hmm. I can guarantee like nine times out of 10, anyone that purchases or tries our coffee, they will put, 
aside their Starbucks coffee, their local coffee, whatever it is, really? and all they would drink is dirty coffee. Well, um, yeah. I think and what then, I'm going to drink now is dirty tea. Because yeah. I normally have a herbal tea before I go to bed. Okay. Like a peppermint and licorice is my favorite. Yeah. And I put on a candle. This is like my new routine I've done to really calm myself down. Yeah. I have a herbal tea, I put on a candle, and then I write my to-do list for the next day. Amazing. Because I feel like in the morning, and you'll see in the journal, mm -hmm. what was happening is I started with a to-do list, and then I would find it hard to do gratitude and affirmations because I was so stressed out yeah. by writing up my to-do list. So now in the evenings, I write down the to-do list. So when I open it, the planner up in the morning, I just write the gratitude, the affirmations, and then I look at the to-do list to do. Yeah, and that's brilliant. my new routine because I brilliant. think it's nicer. Yeah, definitely. So this will be... Oh, add that, yeah. The, um, what I'd say is part of uh, your evening then f to sort of help your sleep is mm. um, you should try the mushroom cacao. Okay. So what we've done is, so we've taken hot chocolate <laughs> uh, okay. and we've made it the healthiest hot chocolate on the planet. Well, this, the, the herbal tea that I've mm. just had, in a weird way, it tastes quite creamy, mm. uh, but it's not creamy. That's and a nice feeling, no? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Normally with herbal teas, they're very watery. So mm -hmm. all that ones I drink, that it's just like drinking hot water with mm -hmm. a little bit of taste. This mm -hmm. tasted really creamy, even though it's just mixed with hot water. And it had a very velvety, like chocolate. I don't know what the, mm -hmm. what the taste was. It was so nice. It wasn't sweet, but it was, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. I'm not describing it very well. No, you well, are, you are. It wasn't are. earthy. And you know, one of the things that we spoke about before you came in is a lot of alternatives to coffee, for example, matcha. Yeah. They take a lot of time to get used to. Mm. And I, it's a, well, the first time I tried it, I thought, how do people drink this? And when I went to LA, everyone drinks matcha. Yeah. It's like, right, I really don't like it. I'm just not going to try it. This was so nice mm. as an alternative to coffee, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. even as an alternative to herbal tea, it tasted much nicer than any herbal tea I've had because it was a lot cre it had a lot more substance to it. Yeah. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And I think that what's amazing is like, we, we've, we've got a huge job to do on the educational front. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because when you hear the education element, you're like, I've got to give this a go. A hundred percent. And then there's the taste element. So, you know, we do we we do events quite often um we're doing the health optimization summit the weekend we just mm -hmm. did an event with davinia taylor uh just some selfridges right we just did selfridges yeah. the first yeah. ever mushroom yeah. bar there mm -hmm. people taste it and they just convert it immediately 100 percent. Oh, that's what i'm gonna do i feel yeah. like it's, I, th I think it's like n you're nervous to say something that's different from coffee because yeah. people love coffee so much yeah that an alternative that tastes similar will always lack in taste is the perception that 100%. people have. Absolutely. hundred yeah. percent, yeah. When you guys were like really stressed, mm. really yes. anxious, I think a lot of people, especially millennials, and the reason why I created this podcast is because I wanted to add one nice element to people's day, mm. right? Make them feel less anxious, learn from amazing people, learn from incredible brands. How long does it take for me to improve mm. my gut, sleep mm. more, mm. be more focused by, t by drinking this tea? It's a really good question. and. So to answer that. <laughs> also as a millennial, I'm like, tell me how fast I can do everything. Yeah. Give me the instant gratification. Yeah. I'm going to change go, my life. Go, okay, I go. think that I'm exactly like you. Uh, I need something to work immediately. Otherwise I'm like out. Oh, uh, I have zero patience for anything. <laughs> I can attest to that as well. Uh, yeah, I'm the worst. Um, and um, why the reason we bought into this is because it worked immediately. So for example, our sleep was, we were insomniacs. Um, we had the reishi right. uh, and then literally in one night we slept like babies. So We're joking. Oh yeah. No, no, it, slept like a log because I think that's because babies don't sleep too well, do they? <laughs> so I know what you oh, mean. Okay. I know what you mean. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you I do. know what okay. you mean but and you, I know what okay. you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slept well, like Well, we a log. slept very well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we slept a full eight yeah. hours and didn't wake up constantly like babies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, like for example, cordyceps, you know, um, you know, when I'm, I, I, I tried it once a, a while ago uh, before a run, and I at that point I'd only run 5k in my life, hadn't run a year and a half, and I ran 15k as an example. So wow. they work very quickly. Um, but what I would say is that, like anything, your body needs time to adapt to things. So you're actually you'll see an instant improvement, and you'll see a better gradual improvement over time. This is amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, there is a. There is another part to it. <laughs> there is another part to it. There is. Uh, we were talking about this offline. The idea of power of reduction, or mm. or you know whatever the thing, the mushrooms will always work, right? Yeah. However, your lifestyle has to yes. complement it. Exactly. So uh, yeah. when you talk yeah. about gut, um, when you talk about you know physical, mental state of mind, uh, something that dirty is all about. As much as the the heartbeat is is mushrooms, it allows for 
this curiosity to prevail about what the other alternative things out there that can improve mm. mind and body. Listen, most of the stuff is is ancestral. Thousands of years ago, it's been lost in translation. Part mm. of the real mission about this is bring mushrooms to the masses and then uh, find ways to improve the betterment of our well-being. So yes, the mushrooms will work, but you have mm. to invest into mind and body as well. Yeah. And part of what we're doing, Dirty, like Andy was talking about, we do these things. Uh, we built a, a tribe, the Dirty Tribe, which is basically a community of those who are incredibly curious about their mind and body because of what the mushrooms have done and they're eager to understand and learn more. So one thing we do at the moment is about 40 or 50 of us that meet, meet uh, 6.30 in the morning. We meet at the Serpentine Lake. Um, we have Jamie Clements, our, our, our breath master, I call him. He's amazing. One should always look him up. And we do breath work for about five ten minutes we drink our mushroom wow. teas we usually drink um cordyceps because we're going in to interrogate the fear of the cold so getting the breath right is really important and the the important the reason i'm bringing this up is because we get to um win the first battle as one as a community and i think community is something that's been lost but the idea that you can put your body into um um, into un uh, unconventional kind of uh, territory is important because uh, a lot of us have a very conventional mindset because what we want to do is get our, our tasks mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. But as much as we invest into those tasks, the most important thing is to invest into mind and body or your task will never be done. So uh, the community is a very important part and the idea of unearthing all these new discoveries about the consistent idea of improving mind and body is also important. So mushrooms will work, but so will the idea of investing into your mind and body. You guys are just amazing. Yeah. I feel like I haven't really said much this podcast. Normally I ask really like interrogating questions. I'm just like You can interrogate. You can interrogate us. <laughs> but it's there's really nothing to interrogate in the sense mm -hmm. that I wasn't aware of the healing power of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And I read your story, obviously, and I researched into it and I think when you're explaining it, it's even more miraculous as to how these things have changed. Like you've mentioned long COVID, people mm -hmm. suffer with that so much, hay fever, anxiety, yeah. sleep you always see these alternative medicines, but none that have actually worked quite quickly. And I think as a generation, we want things to work very quickly. Mm -hmm. So this is an incredible product. I can't wait to try it and use it in my life. And I'll definitely be the first person that will say it will improve all these different things. <laughs> and I'll be a newfound person, who knows? Um, but we have a closing tradition on this podcast. Brilliant. Yes, I saw the, Andrew. I saw your Instagram post. <laughs> podcast tomorrow, what are you gonna dare them to do? Death to <laughs> oh, yes. Truth or dare? Dare. Okay, this is. I found this one really funny. <laughs> Love the way you just said dare. Didn't even give him a chance. Like, <laughs> All right, go on, what? dare, go on. on. On your behalf, I'm saying dare. Yeah, I think we're both doing person? a dare. Okay, this one's really stupid, but go I found on. it so funny, I couldn't stop laughing. It was call the first person on your contact list and sing happy birthday. Oh, how is that? But I think, no, it can't be the yeah. person's birthday. Yeah, because oh. the first person on contact list is our dad, and it's our dad's birthday today. You're joking! Yeah. 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 No yeah. way! Uh, I'm, I've got no service now. We can here. call it's someone such else. A shame. Yeah. I wanted us to call. Oh, really? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I was actually going to make it funny and yeah. say we should call either Akash, which is our mutual friend, yeah. or Roxy. Let's, okay. Let's so you guys can choose. We can call Akash. We can call now. We can call now. Yeah, because we need to yeah, confirm yeah, yeah. a breakfast with him tomorrow as well. So we can do that so as just well. Just saying happy <laughs> birthday. One well, minute. If all of us call him, like, who's he going to answer to first? You. Uh, yeah. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> you call okay. him and just, just don't say anything. Just, just say saying happy birthday, both of you. Did you reject? You've, you've chosen two of the busiest people on earth I as know. well. He does put his phone on um, oh, on just non because I'm just I want to justify the position. We'll do Michael I've called so many people and no one's picking up. So <laughs> Michael will pick up. Yeah. Do you, Michael Foster. I'll explain who he is. Okay. He's a powerful so man. He's he's one of our mentors. Okay. He used to be the biggest agent in Europe. Right. He discovered Hugh Grant. Sasha Brown Cohen, Chris Evans. The Please definitely presenter. call him. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll come into the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just happy birthday, yeah. Are you swimming? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It was on the 18th. Oh. oh, we just oh. got, um, we just got we're on a podcast <laughs> and we got dared to call someone from our phone book and, and sing happy birthday to them. And someone we love and well, adore. I'm, I'm going to say that it is my birthday and that you've done really, really well. <laughs> and you've just had too much mushroom lion tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Michael actually mixes his lion's mane with, uh, what, what wine do you mix your oh. lion's mane with? Well, Brunello. If it's, if it's shit, no, 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 no. If it's, if it's, 
um, a shit wine. If it's a, a wine that's too kind of horrible to drink, if you add the um, lion's mane, it tastes so much better. <laughs> that's a like tip that. for everyone at university. Yeah. Getting five pound yeah, bottles of wine. It's really good. It, it's a very inexpensive way to make a very cheap bottle of wine taste much, much better. <laughs> Well, there you go. There, there you go. Tip. <laughs> I'm a millennial and can't I do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> you can, Michael. Of course you can. Well, I'm writing my memoirs and when they get published, all millennials will want to read them. Yes, they will. Yeah. Yes, they will. They will. Okay. You're, yeah. All right, listen, get on with the podcast. Don't waste this poor lady's time. And I'm, I'm going to go out and have a large cigar for my birthday. Okay. All right, <laughs> Happy enjoy. birthday. Happy love you. Love Bye. you. Lots Bye. of love. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And thank you so much for coming on. I feel like I've learned so much from you. And I'm sure everyone watching and listening to this would have learned so much. And I'm going to buy every single product I physically can. I think you already own tea. all six of them. So it's okay. Yeah. And I <laughs> to me, don't you? I'm just yeah. going to run away with them. <laughs> yeah. But just want to say, by the way, to everyone, can I just tell everyone your age? Yeah, sure. Because you look incredible. You're oh, 39. Bless. Yeah. You, I just heard that on the phone. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I never, I've actually never really defined the journey as thus far by age. Um, I but thought you were both under 30 because your skin is amazing. That's Jagger. Yeah. Right, honestly, yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm never ever going to go back to coffee. I'm never going to go back to any of my pepper and licorice herbal yeah. teas. Pucker, you were in the bin. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> is here. Yeah, <laughs> it's a better name than Pucker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It says Pucker now, anyway. <laughs> What's that Pucker? I don't know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, and I'm sure we're going to do a part two. Because I'd love there's to, so yeah. much more to talk about. Yeah, there's so much. Love to. And I'm so happy to connect with you guys, and I'm, I can't wait to be part yeah. of this community. Yes, th let's thank Mike Rose. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the Dirty World. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could press the like, follow, and subscribe button, it would mean the world to me.